Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning all fellow druid players. So today I wanted to go ahead and continue the updates going with the pulverized druid. <clears throat> I have yet again made a couple of changes with the build. Uh, the primary thing that I have changed is uh, going faster, right? So essentially I did not realize that amulets can roll such a high roll of movement speed. Um, so our amulet now, for example, has 26% movement speed along with spirit cost reduction, some armor, and rank of stone guard. Fortunately, the stone guard rank got really RNG'd and it's only one of three. Stone guard's a really strong passive that gives us more damage while we have fortify. Um, and I've actually dropped out of the two-handed setup and I'm using two kind of in-between one-handed weapons right now. So this has willpower, all stats, vuln, and damage to crowd control. I don't really care too much about that damage to crowd control. The willpower and all stats is good. The reasoning for all stats is it helps hit, um, it basically helps you hit a lot of these factors here. Um, so for example, because of that, I can get like the all core skill damage. Uh, I can get like the bonus spirit here, the bonus spirit here, and you get the gist, right? Then on my offhand, uh, you can actually roll some insane stats here. You can roll critical strike chance, lucky hit, willpower, resource cost reduction, cooldown recovery. Uh, what else is there on there? Uh, damage reduction while fortified. So definitely want to get that basic attack off. And the other cool part is that the implicit, I'll call it, is cooldown reduction naturally. So that being said, I'm going to go jump into a high level dungeon over here. Uh, I made sure to make sure that the dungeon doesn't have reduced cooldowns, like I was actually going to go run this one, but killing a monster reduces your cooldowns. I want to show you guys the difference in the proper one hand setup, right? So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. This is going to be a uh, tier 43, so it is located here, and I still have to work a little bit to fix my damage reduction. There might be like a bit of spiky damage occurring, right? Um, some other thing to address is I am not using the slow anymore, right? Like, um, you know, the earth skills slow whenever you hit them. The main reason is I'm running Insatiable Fury, and I kind of want to drop Insatiable Fury to get that slow back. But at the same time, I kind of want to keep running Insatiable Fury, drop the imprint here for more critical damage, because you don't crowd control bosses in this game, to my knowledge, unless they break. And I don't know, that's... I'm not really sure, right? So I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm, I'm supposed to balance this part. Um, there might just be some other stuff for generic more damage as well, right? So we'll figure it out as we go. But so far, we're not really struggling for damage. So everything has kind of been fine. Uh, you can see the movement speed just walking around down. My God, it's so much faster. I'm basically as fast as my mount while I'm in my werebear as long as I'm not slowed right now. All right, let us get right in there. Now, if you guys are stuck, don't forget you can always go back into my videos. I have like basically progression videos from, I would say day one, but day one was like a 32 hour stream for me. So, you know, pretty much past that, I I've got the content. Okay, so the primary goal here, we got to go free these prisoners, which actually kind of sucks because it's like gonna, gonna hurt our damage a little bit. Oh, I don't have a uh, consumable one. There we go. Now, the purpose of going one-hander instead of two-handed pulverizes the following. Number one, you naturally will swing faster swinging faster in my opinion feels better right whenever you do something faster to me it, it just feels more natural right alongside that you have the ability to be more tanky your shockwave on your pulverize is not going to do as much damage but at the same time you get more flexibility in what you want to use because you basically get um like you get an extra codex slot but it's not going to be as strong so right now, as a placeholder, I'm currently running the whenever your core skills critically strike, you get a bonus of attack speed. Uh, and that's currently what we're running for. Um, I will just show you right here. That's what I'm running right here. I don't think this is anything too crazy, but I will say that attack speed is like big damage right now. Um, I've also heard a lot of people talk about how lucky crit is just garbage or lucky hit is garbage. 
and I don't really do the math when I play the video games, right? I just play the video games and I can see the results for myself and kind of what works. So I'm personally a big fan of Lucky Hit. Um, I, I feel that as I have gotten more and more sources, it consistently procs more and more and I can notice it on my actual spirit here whenever it's actually procking. The only downside I would say with Lucky Hit is even with the source of Lucky Hit I have now, I would say it's still pretty inconsistent on boss fights, but the boss fights don't really last long enough for it to matter for me. The only time I would really say is like, you know, if I want to kill a world boss in literally 45 seconds, uh, I'm not going to have enough lucky hit procs to warrant that, right? Like on a on this character, for example, that's just not going to happen. The Tornado Druid, it would happen. Um, so just, just to see, right, because I'm going to go run to the boss here now or wherever this is, I'll call out every time the lucky hit procs and restores the full spirit. Now just know that on the lucky proc, whenever you crit, you have two times the chance, I believe, to proc your, uh, your Earth and Might here. So the chance is increased uh, 10% for crit. Normally it's 5%. I believe that's how it works. So let's go ahead and jump right on over. What is this? Okay, sure. Okay, so I think it just, just proc there. I think it just proc'd again. Is this levers? Yeah, it is. I hate levers. I think it procced again. I wasn't looking. Okay, now our earth and our bear form is off, so I'm gonna put on my unstoppable immunity here. Back into Grizzly. Okay. Procced again. again Walked again so now in this one hand setup you'll notice the damage is still pretty good and the primary reason the damage is still good is the majority of our damage comes from critting during grizzly rage so if we crit faster we're just ramping faster and faster as well right that's a big part of it It's also nice to state that due to the fact that we are one-hander and we have more uptime on our Grizzly, Grizzly Rage, we virtually have close to 100% uptime on Unstoppable. If I rolled like cooldown reduction, I think, on my codec or whatever it's called, the offhand, I would pretty sure have like, I don't know, like 99% because right now you'll see it's off, right? But I could CC break with my Trample or I could CC break with my Earthen Bulwark, right? And that would put the immunity back on top of my face again. And this also allows me to run the, uh, while you are unstoppable, you gain bonus movement speed and have phasing. So that's another, that's another option, right? Yeah, since I don't really crowd control too much, I am really debating on just dropping the imprinted uh, earth skills deal more critical strike damage, which kind of is sad because this is like a big part of the damage scaling, but... There might be some other other good things like i think there's a really rare ancestral unique called temerity that gives you basically gives you a way to get barrier and then there's one that gives you you deal more damage while you have an active barrier and i think that would already be comparable damage because multipliers are multipliers right this is definitely something we are we are moving more forward into so pretty excited level up my exploit All right, I'd say that's pretty much about it. I don't really think there's much else to cover there. I pretty much have explained, you know, the core process of the build in in the previous videos. I think moving forward, I'm just looking to get better stats, right? So again, on the amulet, I would love to have the stone guard passive higher. I'm not sure what I'm doing regarding my armor. I, I think I'm just going to keep stacking armor. I don't really know. I go up to about 9,000 armor when I'm mapping because of currently... 
this plus all of my bonus armor while I'm in werebear form. I definitely would like to get higher item power weapons and offhand and then get better stats on them as well. Um, but yeah, moving forward, we'll just see how far we can keep pushing the character. I don't really think I'm going to get bricked at all at any point. So we'll just keep leveling and then maybe we'll go Tornado Druid at 100. I'm, I'm not fully sure. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. Um, if you guys like the video, don't forget you can like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I'll have a builder linked down below, which will be like 95% accurate. There's always some, some points I kind of move around based off what I'm doing. So pretty much about it. See you guys all tomorrow.